Countermans Behind the Counter podcast goes behind the scenes of America's parts stores, warehouse distributors, and parts manufacturers with in-depth conversations with the men and women of the automotive aftermarket. Counterman editor Josh Cable takes you beyond the headlines so you can get to know the sales pros who are doing their part to make the aftermarket a great place to do business. Every year since 1986, Counterman has been recognizing the Counter Professional of the Year. With the generous support of our longtime sponsor, Wix Filters, the Counter Professional of the Year program spotlights a go-to counter pro who elevates the profession with their dedication, expertise, work ethic, and customer-first mentality. On this episode of Behind the Counter, we're thrilled to have our 2022 Counter Pro of the Year, Amanda Bulk, manager of the Auto Valley Store in Thorpe, Wisconsin. Amanda, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. You bet. I got a chance to meet you and your husband, Cowboy, at Apex in Las Vegas. I believe that was your first time at the Apex show. What were your impressions of Apex and what was the experience like for you? Uh, it was huge. A lot bigger than what I expected it to be. Yeah. Um, it kind yeah. of overwhelming at times because there's so much to go on at one time. You're part of the Automotive Parts Headquarters family, which is a member of the Aftermarket Auto Parts Alliance. This year at Apex, the Alliance held their jackpot convention. What were some of the highlights uh, for you? Oh, there were so many highlights with the, the Alliance. Um, not only did they give away a bunch of Hawaii trips, we had shows every night. Um, I got to go in a Valvoline drift car. Uh, you know, I got to be on stage multiple times, but the one uh, for the Alliance was a big deal, obviously, because I'm part of it. So I, I'd have to say, so again, it's overwhelming, but it was definitely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, and I've seen uh, some of the pictures from the, from the jackpot convention. It looks like just an incredible experience for, uh, for everybody. Um, it was, yes, definitely. While you're at Apex, either, either at the convention or just you know, walking around Apex, talking to other aftermarket professionals, uh, did you learn anything? Did you pick up any nuggets of wisdom that you were able to bring back with you? Well, you know, as, as a counter person, you're always afraid when you meet these people to tell them the bad. You know, you always think that they want to hear the good. I always don't be afraid to tell them some of the negatives, you know, like, hey, I think this product could be a little better because they can't fix it unless they know it's broken. So not only do they have great products, sometimes there is a few things that might need a little adjustment because we're hands on here. Um, that was one of the big things I learned is that just it's not always the, the best of the best. Sometimes you got to tell them, you know, like, hey, I think if we could change this, we'd be better. Um, and then don't be afraid to use your resources. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are behind the scenes that we don't even realize that are, you know, at all these places like Gates and uh, mm -hmm. Molly and all that stuff. So don't be afraid to ask a question, that's for sure, because somebody knows the answer. Since being recognized as the 2022 Counter Professional of the Year, what kind of reaction have you received back at home? Um, have you, uh, you know, have people been treating you differently or uh, what's, uh, what kind of uh, comments have you been getting from, uh, from your, your coworkers and your customers and whatnot? Obviously you get the whole, you know, they couldn't get me through the door because my head was so big kind of situation. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, There's people that know that I've got a ton of accolades behind me. Not only is it, you know, the, this counter professional of the year, I've got store manager of the year, impact player of the year from the year before, counter uh, professional through APH. Everybody comes in and they congratulate me because they, they know I've been working my butt off. But again, mm -hmm. it, it's not just me. It's a, it's a team effort. You know, it might have my name on it but my team helped me get me to where I'm at. Uh, our mission at Counterman is all about supporting the profession uh, with education and best practices. And in that spirit, I wanted to ask you about some of the things that have helped you get you where you are today. And I wanted to start with your background and experience. I know that even going as far back as your childhood, there was a lot that kind of prepared you for a career in the automotive industry. Could you talk a little bit about that? I think the biggest thing is, is I started out on a farm and not only did I have my uncle teach me, but my dad has always been into automotive stuff. My stepdad's been into automotive stuff, snowmobile and four wheelers, you know, so it's always been something I've always been interested in, you know, how can we fix it? What can we do? You know, you, you got that, that get that itch right away. You know, how do you fix it if it's broken? And then when I went to high school, they had an auto repair shop and my dad basically told me if I wanted to get my driver's license, 
I best know how to change my oil on my own, do the tire rotations, change a flat tire. And honestly, that's how I graduated high school. I was like a half a credit short to graduate. (laughs) And my auto shop teacher made sure he gave me a full credit for all the teachers aiding that I did for him for three years. So I don't think school wanted me there much anymore either. So, <laughs> Well, it's great that you kind of, uh, kind of discovered your niche, you know, fairly early on in life. Um, and I know after high school, you had a brief stint as a technician at a car dealership before you got into the auto parts side of things. How did that experience help lay the foundation for, uh, for parts sales? Uh, Not only did I, uh, you know, do the simple tasks, the oil changes and stuff at the dealership, you got to go interact with the parts people, you know, because you're getting the parts from them when you're in a dealership. So you get to go interact with the guys. And it's always it was always interesting on how they would find the stuff, look it up. Um, But it helped me as far as, you know, I knew what I was looking for um, as far as, uh, like, say, I needed a seal. Now, I know which seal it's at. Same with the rear ends. Um, You know, you learn that stuff being hands-on as a technician. You get people that come into the automotive industry, and they're green, per se. Um, I had one guy that didn't know how to ring a pinion work. Uh, Obviously, learning from being a technician, you knew how it worked and what bearings needed to be. So I have to say I have... You know, that helped me as far as I knew what the technicians were talking about because I've already seen it firsthand and touched it. Yep. Yep. Makes makes perfect sense. And I know a a big part of your business is the uh, DIFM um, side of the business. Yes. Yep. Uh, Was there a point early on in your career when you kind of realized, you know, hey, things are really clicking for me. I think I could be pretty good at this. It's kind of funny you say that because I didn't think I would be doing this as my full time job at, at my age. Um, I kind of walked into it as, you know, it's kind of a middle of the road job when I started selling auto parts. I'd have to say I was probably, you know, I've been probably selling parts for about five, six years. And I get more and more people that would come directly to me versus others. And it's like, okay, so I am doing something right. I'm not screwing up too bad. So maybe I should keep rolling with it. Shifting gears, you know, uh, this is a customer service oriented profession. And I wanted to ask you if you could describe your approach to customer service and what are some of the keys to maintaining strong customer relationships? Most of my customers, uh, they have my cell phone number. You know, honestly, Mm -hmm. you you get to know them on a personal basis. You you try to, you try to hear their problems. Don't just jump to conclusions right away. You got to be a good listener besides, you know, a talker. You you, got to listen to what they have to say and uh, read between the lines sometimes. They, sometimes they don't always know what they're doing, but don't put them down because just because they don't know what they're talking about, exactly what we would think it would be called, doesn't mean that they they know what it is. You know, so you don't put them down. You know, I have mm-hmm. some customers that are women that come in and they have no clue what something's called. Their husband sends them in, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, it's okay. We think we got it. You know, we're, we're good, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just reassure them that you're there for them, not going to put them down because, you know, we've been told that there's other parts stores around that have done that, you know, where they go in there and they feel intimidated because they look, get looked down on. So my approach is, is basically uh, put them first and listen, just be a listener first. What do your customers value most out of a counter professional? Um, I, I would say is the, is the trust, honesty, um, be there for them. I mean, sometimes you have to go that extra mile, uh, even if it's as far as, you know, telling them, hey, we don't have that stuff in the store. We can get it for you. Mm-hmm. But if you go down to the hardware store, there's a chance they might have it for you. Or, you know, our local uh, electrical company that we have that does small engine electrics, uh, little motors and stuff like that. So not only are you providing them, you know, what we might have here, but you're helping our small town community here in Thorpe by giving them a place to possibly go find it for that day. And sometimes they'll come back and want you to order it because they can't find it. But you know what? They're going to come back later on because they might not know where to go, but they know that we know where to go if we can't get it for them. And I think it shows the customers that you're, you're looking out for their best interest. You're not just trying to get a sale. Yes. Yep. yep, exactly. I mean, I like to get the sale. Don't get me wrong. I love yeah, to get the yeah, sale. Yeah, of course. 
sometimes it's better to guide them in a different way. And I think that's what they like here at this particular store is because we are only, I think we only have 1200 people in our, in our town. So, you know, they want that personable stuff. Like where can I get it? Where can I save a dollar at maybe? So we help if we can. Mm -hmm. You were promoted to store manager in 2019. What's that transition been like for you? Uh, it really wasn't that hard. Uh, I actually did a lot of the manager stuff for the manager that left. Mm -hmm. The only thing I didn't know how to do was the paperwork. Honestly, the paperwork was the hardest. Um, you do have some of the you you do have some of the daily tasks that are hard to do, as far as employee stuff. If there's an argument something along the lines that that's a little bit harder it's taken me a little while to get used to some of that kind of stuff where you actually have to you know go both feet in right away but that's where uh my my regional mat has definitely helped me along the way and uh, taught me how to deal with a few things there with that because obviously uh, red hair can get red hair crazy i've learned to control it yeah um and i i did uh have a couple conversations with Matt I was, as I was putting together the cover story um, about you, and he just seems like a great guy. He is. He's an awesome guy. If I if I need anything, it's it's make a phone call, and sometimes I just need to have him there to listen, to be like talk through it. And he's like, "Well, you're on the right path." I'm like, "Okay, thanks. That's all I needed. I just mm -hmm. need to know that reassurance that you're you're doing it correct." So yeah, yeah, I'm sure that makes makes all the difference. For those uh, counter pros out there who have aspirations of moving into a management role, what advice would you give them? And what skills do they need to work on to pre prepare themselves for a managerial role? Uh, just make sure that your your people know if this, in the store that they need to communicate with you. Um, if, if they're not communicating, you're never going to be able to fix it. Again, if it's, you don't know it's broken, you can't fix it. So I always make sure that you communicate appreciate them always appreciate them because you know if it wasn't for them you can't do your job um and make sure you go into stuff with an open mind don't al already have your mind made up that this is what it's going to be because you know, it's not always that way um mm -hmm. make sure you use your sources as, as long as you know you got your regionals your hr team you know stuff at you know up at corporate or wherever you're going to uh, make sure you use your resources because it'll only benefit you in the long run. Uh, you've kind of touched on this a little bit. When you think back on your success as a parts pro and a manager, how important has it been to have the support of your regional manager, Matt, and also the uh, APH family? Huge, 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 huge. Um, uh, Corey, uh, it's kind of like having a family. I mean, yeah. well, we're, we are corporate, but it's still small enough to where Corey, Corey treats you as if your family. Uh, he knows you by name. He talks to you. Uh, same with Matt. You know, I, I can call Matt at five o'clock at night if I needed to have a conversation, just to have a conversation. Um, and it could be just about the day, you know, because I'm having a bad day and you just need to vent. And, you know, it, it, it's as simple as that, you know, and it, it's, so sometimes it's good stuff. Yeah. But a, a lot of times it, it's it's just that little bit of a conversation that'll get you through the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know some places you don't have that opportunity to talk to like the, the owner of the company or your regional managers all over the place and doesn't take the time to talk to you, you know, because they're busy. And I get it. But, you know, Matt has always made sure he's called you back. You yeah. know, I've never had to worry about it. Very cool. In addition to Counter Professional of the Year, you've won a number of awards from APH and Auto Value. Is there a particular award that you're most proud of? Oh, you know, I'm proud of all of them. I, I honestly am proud of all of them. Um, I would have to say the one that I am uh, I am proud of the most from the Auto Value was uh, Impact Player of the Year. Impact Player of the Year was my first year um, as basically a manager that that I won that award. So to be able to come away with that as as a first time, you know, stepping into the manager position and you get that award as an impact player, it was, it was pretty cool just to know that you're doing something right. And then you know that it's, you know, it's go time there. Let's, let's just go up from there. And finally, I want to talk to you about your, what you do in your spare time. I know that you, Cowboy, and your son Landon are active in truck and tractor pulling. How did you get involved in that? Um, I started when I was younger, um, drag racing snowmobiles. 
So I've always had that competitive side of things. I was in sports and stuff, but I was always directed towards motorsports. Um, so drag racing really got me to where I'm at. We wanted, we started out with two-wheel drive mini trucks, and it, it just went from there. We went from that. Now we wanted to go bigger, and my husband found a tractor, and I thought he was crazy. And now all of a sudden we all fell in love with it, and now we have two tractors. We're recording this in December, so there's no tractor pulling going, going on at the moment. How did things go this season? Um, my tractor, we got midway through the season, um, tried a few things with it, um, got a rebuild. Um, right now it's just on a rear end on it and a uh, half-built frame. There's no tires, wheels. You wouldn't even know it's a tractor if you came into our shop. So that was kind of a, a thing. We knew we were going to have a few hiccups because we need to make it able for me to drive and my son who's mm. now taller than me. So we got to make it so two people can drive it. And mm. my husband ended up taking fourth place, I think it was, with Mid-State Pullers of Wisconsin. Mm. Um, and we're the only V8, small block V8 tractors in the class. Um, okay. All the rest of them are diesels or alcohols. So, you know, it, it's it's a, fun, it's a fun sport. It's competitive. You know, it's a whole other family, though. Looking ahead to the next... Uh, I guess the 2023 tractor pulling season. What are your goals for next uh, for next season? For my tractor and Landon's, it's uh, let's get it on the track. Obviously, you want to win, and I'd like to win all of them if I could. But since it's a new tractor build, um, our always our goals are is to get it down the track and be cons- basically uh, you you want to be competitive and be consistent and mm. just always get down the track with it with a new build you just got sometimes you might have to change a few things here and there but uh obviously cowboy he with his belt underneath him uh for his first year with him he's he's out there to try to take our first second that's for sure all right well that's all the time we have for this episode of behind the counter i want to thank our guest 2022 counter professional of the year amanda bulk for joining me on the podcast thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time Thanks for listening to this episode of the Behind the Counter podcast. To stay up to date on the latest news and trends, as well as the latest podcast episodes, be sure to subscribe to the Counterman newsletter at counterman.com.